Well, hello there. Hello. Welcome to my video message. Thank you. To the atheist movement worldwide. We are here to debunk you. Oh no. Have you ever wondered why the earth does not suffer from severe hurricanes and wind blasts that would blow mankind right off this planet? Hmm, no. Speeding along at 67,000 miles per hour and spinning at 1,000 miles per hour would certainly test your fortitude to stay on the orbital earth vehicle, which it is not. It is not moving. What? It's been that way from the beginning. It's written that way in the Holy Word of God. And for some reason, it was withheld from the students as Helio sent You see, it depends on your perception. If you're looking from the earth and the stars are moving and the sun is moving and you say, yes, we're moving around them, that's your perception. It's just like the old-fashioned wind-up clock. When you wound it up, if you let go of it and you held onto the clock, the key went around. And if you held onto the key, the clock went around. Colonel Sanders is right. How can we know that the Earth isn't standing still and the entire universe isn't spinning around us? After all, the Bible says the Earth is fixed, and here are the biblical verses to prove it. Psalm 93, 1, the Lord reigns, he is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength. Wherewith he has girded himself, the world also is established that it cannot be moved. Psalm 96.10. You're a scary man. Say among the heathen, the Lord reigns. The world also shall, shall, be, shall be established that it shall not be moved. And there are a lot more verses where that came from. Mega Sage is making a list, and we can only assume he's checking it twice. Biblical scholars believed in a fixed earth for much longer than they believed the earth orbits the sun. A moving earth was the key heresy that church inquisitors forced Galileo to rescind, and it wasn't until 1992 that the Pope officially admitted that Galileo was right all along. So isn't Megasage just one man crying in the wilderness? Oh my God, there's two of them! Has he been cloned? No, apparently belief in a geocentric world, where stars and galaxies whiz around the Earth at trillions of times the speed of light, defying the laws of physics, apparently that belief is held by many creationists, and not just by old men who look as though they're trying to form a ZZ Top tribute band. It's also shared by our next Golden Crocoduck nominee, Ferny Boy. He reckons he can prove it with physics. In this video we're going to look at the situation and we're going to see if the Earth can possibly be spinning or not. Great! An experiment! That's what science is all about. So what experiment has Ferny Boy done to show that the Earth isn't spinning? Taken measurements of the relative velocities of distant galaxies? Done a recalculation of Coriolis forces on Earth or the speed of the jet stream? No, his budget didn't quite stretch to that. Yes, Ferny Boy invested about a hundred bucks in a toy truck and a remote-controlled model helicopter. The principle behind this is, if the Earth was spinning at 1,000 miles an hour at the equator, then as soon as you jump in the air, you'd be left behind as the Earth keeps spinning underneath you. Or, looked at from the perspective of the people who are standing, if you jump in the air, it would look as though you're being suddenly shot backwards at 1,000 miles an hour. Ferny Boy shows this principle here. The vehicle keeps moving, but when the helicopter rises, it doesn't move with it. I hope you realize what this means. It means that if you open the door and leap from a moving express train, you'll be instantly motionless. You face nothing worse than a simple drop of a few feet to the ground. So why didn't David Adams simply jump down a couple of feet and walk away from this train instead of pretending he's got some sort of forward momentum and doing a dramatic roll in the sand? Obviously, just showing off. I don't think that was the smartest move in the world. Jumping off trains I don't recommend. don't know if I've actually broken my collarbone, but I've certainly given it a hell of a jar. Um, so we'll just uh, see what happens. Um, but I wouldn't recommend jumping off trains. On the contrary, if Ferny Boy is right, then there's no danger at all in jumping off a moving train or a moving truck, because as his experiment showed, objects don't have inertia. In fact, there's no point in trains even stopping at stations. Passengers could just leap out whenever they like, because they have no forward momentum. 
it would be no worse than jumping off a log. In fact, Ferny Boy should move to the next logical step of his experimental process and be the first to try out his new theory on a speeding train. Now, of course, the smart asses among you will say that moving objects have inertia and that this has been established ever since Isaac Newton laid down his laws on motion in the 17th century. Well, what does Isaac Newton know? Ferny Boy's just disproved it with a helicopter, something they didn't have back then. And, of course, you could say that obviously the helicopter would be able to counteract its forward momentum because it's powered, and Newton's law says that an object will continue moving unless acted on by an external force, such as the force of the rotor blades or air resistance. Well, all I can say to that is, good point. But like scary Colonel Sanders, Ferny Boy doesn't base his views on the laws of physics, but on what he calls the Word of God. Now there's just one problem with Ferny Boy. He's clearly so clueless about basic physics that it's possible this is a parody. It's sometimes hard to tell the difference. So let's go to a real creationist and a man whose IQ is off the charts to get the definitive word on how modern creationists no longer believe this Bronze Age belief that the Earth is the immovable centre of the universe. It's all relative. So anyway, I'm kind of sitting on the fence on that one. You're doing I what? I towards the direction that Earth is spinning. Um, Coriolis forces, for example, is one is one reason I would say the Earth is spinning. Um, but, but, how, but, but how about gravity? And the great thing about a man whose IQ is off the charts is that you can actually hear the gears of his brain grinding as they contemplate this 500-year-old piece of information. What about it? Well, if it, uh, it's a bit like a magnet. If yeah. you have a small magnet and a big magnet, yep. the big magnet's the one that's going to pull the little magnet around and not the yep. little that's going to pull the big one. Yes. So if you compare the Earth next to the, uh, the Sun, yep. which one's going to make the other one spin around? Uh, yeah, the Sun will make the Earth spin around, yeah. So and that's, that's one of the other reasons, too, is the whole gravitational thing. Um, because, well, yeah, because, because geocentrism would... I could be wrong on this, but I would think geocentrism requires a continuous miracle is kind of the clincher for me um, because you would have to have this this let's say the sun is orbiting around the earth then it's going to over time it's going to get out of balance and it's going to switch places the sun will wind up in the middle for the reasons you just said and earth is going to wind up on the outside no so, Ian, it's not going to go out of balance or switch places two large bodies in space orbit each other according to a very basic law of physics neither one orbits the other in fact, they both orbit a common point called the barycenter in between their centers of mass. In the case of our solar system, the Sun and planets orbit around their common barycenter. Of course, because the Sun's so massive, the barycenter is actually very close to the center of the Sun, but the result gives the Sun a very distinctive wobble. You can also see it in the way a hammer thrower pivots around the barycenter between him and the hammer the thrower moves with a slight wobble. Come on, Ian, I learnt this in seventh grade. My physics teacher even gave us the example of the hammer thrower. It's as easy to understand as that. So it's not a case of maybe a larger object orbited a smaller one and then they switched around. You've got to at least be able to look at a junior high school science textbook and figure out why that can't happen. You could even have checked that by the time it took you to lay out a dinosaur egg display. Still, one thing I'll say for these geocentrists is at least they're being honest in their interpretation of the Bible. It does indeed say that the Earth is the center of the universe and doesn't move. It's only when science came along and showed that that was not the case that all of a sudden the Bible was reinterpreted, as it always is when science shows it's wrong. <laughs>